Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. So in this session we are going to discuss about inflation. So this picture depicts that in 1990 we had bought so many goods for 500 rupees. But in 2016 we got only these many goods for same 500 rupees. So this is because of increase in prices that is inflation. So what do you mean by inflation actually? So inflation means it is a sustained increase in prices in the goods and services in the prices of goods and services okay what do you mean by sustained increase there is constant increase in the level of prices in the total economy over a period of time okay so i can say in inflation in simple terms higher the price fewer the goods can be purchased at the same amount that means the prices have increased but with the same amount i am buying very less goods than the earlier this is called inflation okay moving on to the types of inflation so what are the types of inflation we have the first type of inflation is demand pull inflation next is cost push inflation and the next third one is structural inflation so we shall study about them in detail now okay so what do you mean by demand pull inflation so demand pull inflation means as the demand for the products increase prices of them or price of these also rise in the same proportion so it is a well known fact as the demand increases the prices of them obviously increase okay moving on to the next type of inflation that is cost push inflation so here some cost is causing some inflation so which cost is that it is the manufacturing cost which causes inflation so as the manufacturing cost of the products increase the prices of these increase how the manufacturing cost increases it may be due to the raw materials price or sometimes the total overall making cost has increased sometimes the raw material price has increased sometimes the laborers in the working factory may go on strike for bonus so now the company has given a bonus that bonus extra bonus will be transferred to the manufacturing cost because the manufacturer doesn't put money in the making of a product from his own so finally transfers to the consumer so in these two ways the manufacturing cost increases so as the manufacturing cost increases the prices also rise the third type of inflation is structural inflation so what do you mean by structural inflation as the name says structural structural means due to structural changes in the economy the prices rise what are the structural changes sometimes in 1990s there was no demand for the computers okay so after the demand for the computers due to technological revolution the demand for computers has risen this is a structural change in the economy earlier we used to have only landlines now we have mobile so cost of mobiles smartphones has increased okay so this is the structural changes example so these are the three types of inflations we have first is demand pull demand is causing inflation next is manufacturing cost is causing inflation and third is structural changes are causing inflation moving on to the calculation of inflation how do we actually calculate inflation so inflation is calculated by comparing the current year prices with the base year prices so what do you mean by this base year i know about current year right but uh, what is this base year base year is the one which is used for comparison with the current year prices what is this base year in this base year the prices of the products are almost equal or constant from the first month to the last month okay so that year is chosen by the government it may vary from time to time recently it was changed for some index we'll see in the coming uh, topics in this chapter okay so in that year from the first month to the last month the prices are almost constant it may be calendar year that is jan to december or financial year or fiscal year what is this financial year or fiscal year it is the 
from starting from 1st April to 31st March of the next year that is a financial year or fiscal year. So in this year the prices are almost constant from first month to last month. So how do I calculate inflation? So it is nothing but the current year prices minus base year prices by base year prices into 100. So inflation is always calculated in percentages because I am comparing prices. So if it is inflation is positive it is increase in prices if it is negative it is decrease in prices that means base year prices are more than current year prices. if it is positive current year prices are more than base year prices so in this way we calculate inflation moving on to the next that is stages of inflation so what are the stages of inflation do we have so there are four stages of inflation like a baby after it has born first it creeps right so here also our inflation creeps so first inflation first stage of inflation is creeping inflation so when do i call an inflation as creeping inflation so if the inflation rise that is price rise is up to three percent in a year only three percentage increase in the prices then such type of inflation is creeping inflation then the baby after creeps it walks right so the next type of inflation stage is walking inflation so it is from 3% to 10% the next is running inflation from 10% to 20% and next is galloping or hyperinflation okay it is about 20% okay so these are the stages first creeping then walking then running then galloping or hyperinflation generally most of the governments will keep the inflation within the 5% inflation rate in india rbi has a target for inflation of 5% that means only 5% increase is allowed in a year okay clear with this next moving on to the next one what are the indices used to calculate inflation okay how these are measured so there are two types of indices first is in india we have only two types of indices but in the world we have three types what are those first is wholesale price index wpi next is consumer price index cpi and the third is producer price index ppi in india we use cpi and wpi only okay us uses ppi produces price index we shall see about them in detail now so the first is wholesale price index what is this wholesale price index it is also called as wholesale inflation so why it is used to track the changes in price levels of wholesale goods what do you mean by wholesale goods i think most of us know that there are two types of goods wholesale goods and retail goods so what are these wholesale goods and retail goods one which are traded in bulk suppose if i am buying one pen it is called retail good if i am buying a sheet of pens it is called wholesale good when i buy in wholesale that is in bulk there may be a discount yes or no yes so i am tracking the price changes whether they have increased or decreased on these wholesale goods okay so in the base year for wholesale price index that is wpi is 2011 to 12 equal to 100 so that equal to 100 means it is a base year used for comparison with the current year so that is 2011 to 12 means is it calendar year or uh, financial year yes it is calendar year sorry it is financial year because first april 2011 to 31st march 2012 okay and uh, in India, WPI, that is Wholesale Price Index, is calculated by Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Okay. And it is calculated on 697 items as of now. Okay. As of December 2017. Clear with this? Okay. So, this is about Wholesale Price Index. It is also called as Wholesale Inflation. Moving on to the next type of inflation, that is consumer price index cpi so cpi is calculated on the retail goods that's why it is called as retail inflation i've told you already what is retail in retail good when you buy one on single basis it is a retail good 
so why i'm using to track the changes in the price levels of retail goods okay and the base year for cpi is currently 2012 equal to 100 that means it is a calendar year okay and cpi is calculated for rural areas urban areas and both combined rural and urban by the cso cso stands for central statistics office of the ministry of statistics and program implementation there are two organizations under ministry of statistics and program implementation one is cso and another is nsso we have learned in unemployment rate unemployment rate is calculated by nss and cso is calculated by uh, and cpi is calculated by cso central statistics office and cpi for al that is agricultural laborers is given by ministry of labor and employment okay there is also like cpi for iw that is industrial workers it is also given by ministry of labor and employment okay so these are the two indices which we calculate in india one is cpi another one is wpi wpi on wholesale goods cpi on retail goods moving on to the third type of index that is producer price index so what is this producer price index okay so producer price index is a family of indices that measures average change in the selling prices that is available for the domestic producers of goods and services that means it calculates the average change in the selling price of the which is available to the producers i am not talking about consumers here earlier i was talking about consumers in both wpa and cpa now i am talking about the sellers what is selling price changes which are available to the producers okay it is widely used in usa but it is yet to be formulated in india okay in india we use cpi and wpi i think you may have a doubt sir is there any value of items on cpi on WPI we have 697 items right but on CPI there is no fixed number of items like 697 for WPI okay clear with this so India we use CPI and WPI for calculating inflation and they are calculated weekly monthly quarterly half yearly and yearly okay so if it is positive there is price increase and if it is negative there is price decrease okay Moving on to the next one that is Phillips curve, the most repeated question in many general studies examinations. So what is this Phillips curve? So Phillips curve establishes the inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. I'll tell you a small example. So suppose we are unemployed now. I don't have enough money. So am I going to buy more products? No. Suppose after one month I am employed. After working for a one month, after my employment, I'll get salary. So do I sit simply? No. I'll spend some money and I'll save some money. So that means when I get some money more, I'll spend more and increase the demand for the products and increase the prices. That means inflation is directly proportional to employment. When people are having more money, they'll spend more and increase the prices. So that's why inflation is always indirectly proportional to unemployment lesser the unemployment that is higher the employment more the inflation more the prices higher the unemployment that is lesser the employment lesser the inflation clear clear with this higher the unemployment lesser the inflation lower the unemployment higher the inflation okay clear with this so this is the phillips curve it plots a graph between inflation rate and unemployment rate and that is inverse relationship moving on to the next one that is disinflation there are some terms which we discuss about inflation along with inflation the first is disinflation so what do you mean by disinflation so disinflation means it is a slowing rate of inflation now suppose the prices have increased now they slowly start decreasing see suppose earlier there was a price rise of from 10 to 15 rupees now the price rise is from 10 to 13 rupees there is price rise but 
there is a slowing rate of inflation earlier 10 to 15 rupees now 10 to 13 rupees so this is called disinflation that means inflation is slowly coming down but inflation is positive there in both the cases there is price rise but in the next case it is very less clear with this so this stage is called disinflation next is deflation so it is totally general decrease in prices that means i can I call it as opposite to inflation yes now prices have risen slowly they are reducing now totally they are reducing from 10 rupees to 8 rupees 6 rupees 5 rupees 3 rupees like that so this stage is called deflation decrease in prices which is opposite to inflation moving on to the next stage that is reflation so what do you mean by reflation so reflation is a stage suppose now there is serious deflation that means very low prices suppose very high prices means they are not favorable to the consumer very low prices means they are not favorable to the manufacturer because he is not interested to produce because he may think that he will not get profits so there must be some price stability such that both consumer and manufacturer are at equilibrium so reflation is a stage when there are very low prices the government and rba takes steps to increase the prices so that the manufacturer will get interest to produce more what does government do it will go for tax cuts so that people will have more money and they'll spend more and increase the prices what does rbi do it will go for expansionary monetary policy okay it will add more money to the bank so that they'll lend more and people will have more money and they will increase the prices so this stage is called reflation stage increasing the prices next is stagflation the most repeated question in many general studies examination so this is a very rare case so it is a case where inflation is high and also unemployment is high so can i say it doesn't follow phillips curve yes because inflation is high and unemployment is also high you can see in west african countries there there is no employment that is full unemployment and also prices are also high so this stage is called as stagflation so this is all for this session Thank you.